Welcome back to 10-5 Plays, baby. Now, this is going to be part two of my series of what could Breath of the Wild 2 learn from, insert, past Zelda game. Now, I'm doing these in chronological order from the timeline, so last time with Skyward Sword, I'll try and link it here. If not, you can find it in the description. The next game is The Minish Cap. Now, it's a smaller scale game, so this list isn't going to be that crazy. I thought about combining it with Ocarina of Time, but Ocarina of Time needs its own video, so. So yeah, this shouldn't take too long, so let's get into it. First up is the fast tech speed. Something simple. And I know I'm also playing Wind Waker right now to get that one ready. But one thing I noticed about Wind Waker is how how, how slow the tech speed is, man. And it is crazy. I didn't realize how slow it was. And I don't use this point to say that Breath of the Wild had slow tech speed. But in, in Minish Cap, it was noticeable just how much faster it was. And... As many times as I've played Breath of the Wild, I can only imagine how many times I'm going to play Breath of the Wild 2. So, being able to have the option to really just blitz by the text if you have to, would be really good for me. And it definitely worked for me in this game. The next is, you know, the main shtick of the Minish Cap, the tiny world. Now in Breath of the Wild, I know we saw the concept art where you had Link by a tiny house. I would love to see that in Breath of the Wild 2. I don't know, I don't know man. I do think it's cool though. Maybe as a place to visit, you know, for a portion of the game, because you don't want it to just be Minish Cap 2 or anything like that, but you know, some, something to that effect of being able to at least visit there and see something, you know what I mean? It's a nice way to make it feel different and to make it feel new, you know what I mean? And it looked really cool from that concept art, so. You know, don't blame me, blame Nintendo, because they showed us and it was fire, bruh. So if if they incorporated that into the game somehow, you know, I'm sure it wouldn't just be as straightforward as I'm thinking because Nintendo likes to pull out surprises and I feel like if they did implement that, it would surprise us. So yeah, I would definitely like to see that tiny world aspect come back. When people played Breath of the Wild, this next thing wasn't something that came to mind until after when you think, Hmm, what could they use to improve the game? And that's enemy variety. I said the same thing in the Skyward Sword video, so I won't harp on it, but this game did have a lot of enemies and they varied a lot. And I feel like one of the cool aspects is how they had some older enemies come back, but they were just massive and they looked different because you were so small. That was kind of awesome and it was creative. So just give me some enemy variety, man. and. You know, props to Minish Cat for its enemy variety because it was pretty cool. Next up is an ice themed temple. In this game, I, I believe it's called the Joplet Temple. It was really creative. And it's not like Zelda hasn't been creative with temples that incorporate ice in the past. But, you know, this is the first game that I'm hitting with it. So, yeah, I thought it was super creative. And I feel like those types of mechanics and restrictions and challenge would work really well in the Breath of the Wild sequel. You know, it would limit climbing, maybe you can only climb to a certain distance and have to uh, get over a section of ice, you know what I mean? Especially in a game where it has such strong physics, that would be awesome. It would just make the game better. And of course it wouldn't be bad to have that in a dungeon or a temple or a mini dungeon, a mini temple, whatever you want to call it, because we all know the shrines kind of all seem the same so having that type of theme in it and that type of difficulty mixed with the physics of breath of the wild would be awesome i'd love to see it now next up we have what i would call creepy areas definitely creepy areas i felt i felt like there was there was one particular spot in minish cap that was pretty creepy not gonna lie, it was creepy. 
Now, it wasn't like I was scared or anything, but if you go to Royal Valley in Minish Cap, you'll see what I'm talking about. This brings up more than one thing. I would like there to be an area like this, creepy, it's dark, the only thing you can use to see is with the light. You know, kind of like those ruins in Breath of the Wild where there was no light and you had this to use your torch and then go and find a Hinox and whatever. It was creative. But with this, the tree is a creep. Like, it's a creepy design for everything around you. It's just a creepy environment. The enemies are ghosts, you know? So, if they're definitely trying to make this game darker, if that's what they're doing, having a creepy area like that would be great. Maybe give Link a lantern too, but I'll get into that in another video. But having the lantern would be cool. It'd be a nice update from the torches that you had. And it would be nice to either not, maybe not fight ghosts, but if they fought, if you fought like skeleton enemies of what used to be Hyrule soldiers brought back to life, that would be crazy. That would be dope. It would be spooky, creepy. Toss the Deads in there too, man. Bring them back. They deserve that respect. But yeah, I would be, I would be thrilled. And I would be thrilled to see my boy Dompe back. You know what I mean? Finally, for the last, the last thing that I got to say is I loved how in Minish Cap, you used a majority of your weapons a lot after getting them. Now, I know one of the complaints about Zelda as a series has been that you'd get an item, you'd use it in the dungeon, and then that's kind of it. You didn't use it again. In Minish Cap, you did. You used the items quite a lot. And I don't know if items are going to return in Breath of the Wild 2 to any capacity, but if they do, and, you know, it kind of follows that traditional path with whatever changes they're going to make, make sure that the item is something that you can use in the overworld and you can use during general play, and it's not just in your inventory. You know what I mean? If it's not don't have it in the game because it's kind of just a waste like it's cool for the temple or dungeon or whatever but once you're done and it just kind of sits there and you never use it again except for maybe the three or four areas where you know it's clearly there for you to use that one tool you know that's lame i i, I wanted to be part of like the seamless exploration of the world like in like breath of the wild you know what i mean you know that's that's all i want so yeah that was what I like to see in Breath of the Wild 2 from Minish Cap. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. You know what I mean? Let me know in the comments and look out for the next one. It's going to be what can Breath of the Wild 2 learn from Ocarina of Time. It's probably going to be a lot longer. So, you know, bring your snacks, bring a drink. You know what I mean? Bring your Switch. Play it and also watch. I don't know what you're doing. You do what you got to do. Just watch the video, all right? Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for listening. I'll catch you on the next one, all right? Peace.